During the 1840s and 1850s, if you wanted to go west, you might consider going to the far west. Um, far west was an unsettled territory. Uh, it was still inhabited by Indian tribes, and there were a lot of hardships to consider. But there was a man uh, by the name of Roland Gardner. Uh, his occupation was that of a comb maker and a sawyer and he was from Connecticut. Well, uh, he met up with another family by the name of Harvey Luce, who, to whom he married one of his daughters. So they, the families together decided to go to Far West, and they equipped a uh, team of oxen and supplies that they thought would uh, hold them and, and take care of them and began on their trail. Well, it, in June of the year of 1855, they arrived at Lake Okaboji. Here's a picture of Lake Okaboji. Beautiful lake. They fell in love with this lake at, at once, and they built cabins on the western shore. They realized that um, it was too late to plant a crop that year. They were well into the summer months, and so they had to uh, figure out a way to treat, to feed their oxen and um, to, to get by until they could plant in the spring. So what they did was they chopped up um, the hard ground there and made hay from it and that's how they fed the oxen. Well, during the winter time, it, you might, as you might suspect, it's pretty cold in Iowa. And um, by February, they were literally freezing to death. Um, in fact, there were two men in their party who had frozen legs. Um, Two of them, two legs were amputated on one man and um, one leg on another man. So this is what they were faced with. And uh, although uh, Gardner and Luce were the early settlers in that region, their company only consisted of nine people. But as the winter began to uh, press on, more and more settlers came into the area and um, they were looking at a bank of snow 15 feet high. So they began to realize that they did not have enough food, that the food would not sustain the settlers in that region uh, for the entire winter. So they knew that they were gonna have to do something about it. Well, the nearest a settlement where there were supplies was Fort Dodge. But what they did was they decided to go back to um, two of the settlers' original home place and started out on that route. Well, the treacherous snow and the um, hardship getting there was overwhelming. But finally, when they reached the area, they were able to get some supplies, but the oxen that they had taken with them were exhausted, as well as two of their members of that company could not go any further. So they remained behind and um, to recoup. Meanwhile, uh, the four remaining men who had gone after the supplies began their return to this beautiful lake where they had made their home. When they got back home and everyone was so happy and with the food 
and they just celebrated uh, something terrible happened. It was three days had not passed before they were attacked by Indians. And um, these Indians were vicious. They spent three days attacking all of these settlers. Um, they were led, they were Wakapuki band of 14 Santee Sioux Indians, and they were led by a renegade chief by the name of Inca Patu, meaning Scarlet Point, to give the pronunciation of these Indian words. I don't know it. So the attack continued all the way uh, around this lake as well as Spirit Lake where some of the settlers lived. Here's a map of Spirit Lake. You can see how that goes. It actually, Spirit Lake is near the northwestern border of Minnesota. So the reason for the attack was a revenge attack for the murder of one of the Indian's brothers. I hope you enjoyed this little story. There are many stories uh, of the settlers who went west at different parts of the time and from the early 1700s to the late 1800s. And uh, most of the time they encountered Indian attacks. Please visit georgiapioneers.com and hope you can find your ancestors there.